Well, in our third season in the two Bundesliga, we've got off to our best start so far in this division so far. We are undefeated and also through to the second round of the DFB Pockel. Hopefully today that will continue before we do get into transfer deadline day as we take on Werder Bremen and Kaiserslautern. <laughs> Welcome to episode 53 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we take on Werder Bremen away from home and Kaiserslautern at home both in the two Bundesliga hoping to keep an undefeated start to the season going also an update on the DFB Pockel having played the first round of that off camera and also we have made a transfer since yesterday's episode and might do more as well come the end of today's on transfer deadline day, so it could be a big one if you're looking forward to it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but in yesterday's episode, we played our first two games of the new season, took on Augsburg as well as Darmstadt. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, our best start to a season, obviously, because it's still intact. A draw on that opening day at home, that was a bit frustrating, having given away an early penalty, but then a very entertaining win for free away at Darmstadt, so it did mean we picked up four points from our first two games, as I say, our best start, and thankfully, that has continued since you were last here. First up, we did play in the first round of the DFB Pockle. We usually show this game on camera, but because this team that we were playing weren't actually in a playable division, are below even the regional Liga. We did decide to play this one off camera, put out an entirely rotated team, but thankfully they still got the job done. Took a little while to get going, but four goals in the first half, not much in the second. Did mean we picked up a comprehensive 4-0 win and make our way through to the second round of the DFB Pocket. Off the back of that, we did actually do some transfers and got through the door a new centre-back here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, we're looking for one for a little while to be an improvement on Alexander Stankovic or Lucas Search. We actually found someone who's an improvement on both and makes his way into the starting 11. A little bit older than I was hoping and not quite as much potential as I'd usually go for. But attribute wise, he is certainly an upgrade on both Stankovic and Lucas Search. This is Omar Kolli, a Gambian international, 34 years old, so a lot older and the players we usually sign here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but he is a significant improvement on the likes of Search and Stankovic, so I thought we'd bring him in to hopefully help us get up to the Bundesliga come the end of this season. He spent some time at some decent clubs of late, the likes of Besiktas, Sampdoria, Genk, and before then was around some lower clubs, but he is a decent player and makes his way into our starting eleven. does Omar Kolli, and thankfully, in his first league game since he did join us here, at Lokomotiv Leipzig, we did pick up another one. Free one at home over Eintracht Braunschweig. Goals here to Campanelli, Atilgen, and Thibaut Cliche. They grabbed one back late, but thankfully by that stage, it was well and truly all over. And that was actually through a defensive mistake as well. So it was a pretty good performance, picking up a free one win there over Eintracht Braunschweig. Well, that means going in to today's episode, as we are in quite a good position early doors in the two Bundesliga. Certainly a lot stronger than we usually in in our past couple of seasons, since we have made our way up to the second tier, we are in fourth, albeit the teams above us and below us have played for the most part one more game than us, so hopefully a win in this first one will get us up there and back inside that top three, a very nice place to be, nice and early in the season, hopefully this time we won't have to play catch up quite as much as we have early stages over the past couple of seasons, but before we do get into our opposition in today's episode and off the back of that transfer which we did make as well as the one in yesterday's episode of Campanelli at right back. You may have spoiled it before but we have had the second round draw for the DFB Pockle off the back of that game that we did play off camera. It's not going to come up until late October but we've got a big one. We are traveling away to take on Bayern Munich, the champions of Germany as is usually the case. These guys absolutely dominant in German football albeit last season. Did lose the DFB Pockel final to our senior affiliate in Eintracht Frankfurt, but still, that is going to be a very big game coming up in the latter stages, I imagine, of this week. They did just lose one of the early games in the Bundesliga 3-1 at home to Dortmund, which is very surprising, and are down in fifth because of that result, but still early days. That will be a very tough test for us. We'll come and show you guys that game, but it probably means we won't progress any further than the second round 
of the DFB pocket, which is a little bit unfortunate, but will be a good test for us to see how we might fare if we do go up to the Bundesliga come the end of this season. But coming up today, we finish the month of August before transfer deadline day, and we take on Werder Bremen. These guys, 12 early stages of this new season, they have lost two of their games, then picked up a win off the back of a resounding win in the first round of the DFB Pokal. They were a team expected to be right up there in terms of the promotion fight this season, so it could be tricky, especially away from home. And of course, on the final day of the season last season, where we needed some results to go in our favour, we did get the job done over these guys, but it was a close game. And unfortunately, those other results did not go in our favour. Hopefully, we can pick up another good result against these guys. And off the back of that, we come back and take on a team who have just made their way back in to the two Bundesliga after a season down in the free league, albeit they have not got off to a good start. Have Kaisers out in four defeats, including in the first round of the DFB pocket, albeit that was two at the moment. The table toppers in the Bundesliga in Wolfsburg, but to be fair, their losses haven't come by very big margins at all, including against teams who at the moment are near the top of the table in Bochum and Arminia Bielefeld. So that game could be a little bit trickier than we might expect. This is a team expected to finish right down the bottom of the table this season. With that one being at home, you'd like to think that is a game that we can pick up maximum points from and hopefully keep ourselves up near the top end of the two Bundesliga table. And before we do get stuck into the action in today's episode, also a bit of a quick injury update. Unfortunately, we are missing a player, in particular one of our starters, Matteo Coachella, did pick up an injury off the back of that first round win in the DFB Pogli, even though he didn't actually feature in that game. He picked up an injury in training as the Florian Huxa, thankfully Huxa, has come back since then, but Coachella twisted ankle. He is out for nine days to three weeks, so it does mean he won't feature in either game in today's episode. So that means that Lewis Warrington will get some game time in his place. One of our new signings here at Locomotive Leipzig, but that's our only injury concern going in to today's episode. And hopefully, we can keep the good times rolling with this Gagan press here at Locomotive Leipzig. And first up, we travel to take on Werder Bremen. And here are the team sheets for the first game of today's episode. Here are Werder Bremen. To be fair, they look very similar to the team that we took on in our final game of last season at this venue, a 2-1 win, which unfortunately wasn't quite enough for us to make our way into a promotion playoff spot. As I said earlier, Collie these days over search at centre-back and also Warrington in place of an injured Coachella. But apart from that, we are at full strength. Florian Huxa back in the team these days can handle more than 45 minutes unlike our first episode of the season yesterday and we'll get things underway here with a highlight immediately in our favour from the kickoff there's Warrington playing across to the other new player there and Collie now Racine Bullock up to Krasnicki nice ball over the top the early big chance for Thibaut Cliche chips the goalkeeper but it goes well wide that's a big early chance that we miss decent start though but it's nil all and just show the 15 minute mark, we get the next highlight in this game. It's a corner here in our favour. Tom Gale gets his head on the end of that one at the near post, but unfortunately, that one comes off the crossbar. Some good early chances for us here based on highlights, but so far, haven't hit the target, and it remains nil all. And very short off the back of that previous highlight, yet another corner here in our favour. This time, far post Tom Gale doesn't quite reach him, but Quetto on the ball. Now, Racine Bullock Collie will just hold things up and play that one back to Huxa. Although, poor pass there. Gal just lets that one go by, and Mohamed Charm can get on it there for Verde Bremen. Thankfully, though, Collie does track back and get us back in position. It's good work there from the elder statesman at the back these days, 34 years old. We'll see how long he lasts. In place of Lucas Search, Quetto there was on the ball but loses it for a tackle. And now Braff makes his way forward here for Werder Bremen. Ode here from a tight angle. We'll play that one back for Budan. Tries to square that one for Mohamed Chan. Thankfully, we deal with it but only clear it briefly. And now Braff back inside the box takes a shot. It takes a wicked deflection. And Mohamed Chan will head that one home. And that's a frustrating goal to concede. A few errors from us there, especially that pass from Huxa when we did have position down the other end off the back of that corner. And so far, highlight-wise, we've been on the front foot for the most part, but Werder Bremen take their chance when they get it down the other end and make it 1-0 halfway through the first half. And that was it for the first half, just those three highlights, which mostly were in our favour, but unfortunately lose past there from Florian Huxa, who yet again is struggling as is to follow Cliche. There will be a few players who will come off here at halftime, and we find ourselves 1-0 down thanks to that counter-attacking goal Brut Mahad Chan, both wingbacks can come off because they're struggling. Also, Salili up front and Davida for Krasnicki, who picked up a yellow card. It's quite a few changes there at halftime 
wasn't the worst performing half, but scoreline-wise, a bit disappointing. And also, we haven't got nearly enough shots on targets. So we'll tell the boys, so far they've been terrible. Hopefully they'll sort it out and we can come back and grab something from this game. We get the second half underway, 1-0 behind. And only a few minutes into the second half, we get the first highlight here. It's a front in our favour around about the halfway line taken from Campanelli, who to be fair so far has been quite good in that right back role in place of Florian Huxa when he has been used. If he performs well here again today, maybe he might get a start on that second game today against Kaiser Slaughter. And we get the ball forward to him yet again. Nice ball into the mixer here. Or Salue, he puts that one home top right corner for his head from a very similar spot where Mohamed Chan put it away. In the first half, we're going to wait here for an offside check. VAR is making sure he was onside. And two of our substitutes there do link up. And players who have been doing well in place of a couple of strugglers so far this season. In Florian Huxa and Thibaut Cliche. Nice first time cross there from Campanelli from that ball over the top. From Bullock, I believe it was. Indeed it was. And Salue gets up nicely. Puts it away top right corner. And we're right back in this game with 40 minutes left. It's one all. And just shy of the hour mark, it is here Werder Bremen on the attack. Bass there did look for an interception our left back, but unfortunately Werder Bremen do still keep the ball. Braff wins that one there too. Nice one too there between him. And Mohamed Cham gets a shot off from a tight angle. Thankfully, that one comes off the post and we clear our lines. And it remains one all with a half hour left. And the ends of the last 20 minutes of this game as Osman Atilgan just picks up a yellow card as did Yuri Bass. It's a free kick there too. Werder Bremen thankfully we intercept that pass. Looking for their left winger. Unfortunately, from that clearance, though, they do win the ball back. Although Campanelli heads that one out to Davida, and hopefully we can get something going here on the counter attack. Warrington plays that one for to Cueto. Nice pass there again to Campanelli. Some real bench impact from him. Puts the ball into the mixer, but unfortunately, that's well covered there from the Verde Bremen goalkeeper in Gersbeck. They pump this one deep. It's missed by everyone. And Mohamed Cham here does get in behind. Plays that one to Braff. Thankfully, good deflection there, and Kapakas can make a save and put that one out for a corner. One all as we're about to enter the last 20 minutes of this game. Warrington on a 6.5 and is down to a red heart. Maybe we should take him off here with our last substitution, even though a few players are on yellow cards. I think that might be, in fact, what we do. We'll bring on Chaiwa for him, see what he can do in that deep line playmaker role. Of course, no Kachala to put in that role while he is injured. So we'll see what Chaiwa can do in that slightly different role to what we bought him for and see if that helps cut out this highlight. But unfortunately, the corner is still going to take place, albeit it now gets cut off inside the last 20 minutes and still at one all. And we're just making our way inside the last five minutes of this game. It might be time for us here to potentially try and go attacking and see if we can do something late in this game. Only four minutes of at a time. A lot of yellow cards here for our players. Hopefully that doesn't backfire though. It is a corner here to Werder Bremen. Thankfully far post corner. Bit of a tight angle. They put that one wide of the post. And it's a one all draw here in our first game of today's episode. Just like yesterday, that was a reasonably even game. We had these shots and less on target. Also picked up a lot of yellow cards in that second half, which is a bit strange for the Gagan press style. But thankfully, our XG was very high or better. I think a lot of that came from that early chance to Debeau Cliche, that chip over the goalkeeper that went wide of the mark. We went down about halfway through the first half, but thankfully, nice and early in the second half, some of our substitutes in Campanelli and Salui linked up, and we did pick up an equaliser, and we do remain undefeated, albeit it is only a draw here away. At Verde Bremen, albeit as you can see, it gets us back inside that top three thanks to goal differential. And hopefully, we can stay there when we come back and take on bottom of the table, Kaiserslautern. And we are back for the second game of today's episode and the team sheets. A few changes from that previous game. Some players who made some good impact off the bench. Duki to start in Campanelli at right back as well. As slowly up front, it does mean that Huxer and Cliche do drop down to the bench. Hopefully, we start off a bit better than we have in a couple of games this season. Those two in particular have had a poor start to the season. Kaiserslautern playing quite a defensive system, but it's not working so far. Zero points. Hopefully, we can pick up three here at home. And just shy of the 15 minute mark, the first highlight in this game here is a goal kick to Kaiserslautern. Those guys in the all red, they flick that one on to the Paula. He gets in behind, but thankfully, I think that might have been Collie who got a block on there, and Krapakas does claim that one, but that's a dangerous early chance there. Thankfully, we somewhat deal with the danger, and now we're down the other end only a few minutes later. 
through Krasnicki back to Campanelli, puts that one into the mix. It can't quite link up there with Cueto. We put some good pressure on them here, though, nice and high up the field. Krasnicki gets that one back from a poor pass. Now, Salui will rob them twice of the ball, puts it away inside the far post. His fifth goal of the season, albeit quite a few of those goals did come in that cup game against the team below the regional league. So that's a bit harsh on someone like Thibaut Cliche, but to be fair, definitely so far the form striker at the club this season. Kaiser Slatin just too slow on the ball at the back. Good work there from Salue to pinch it twice. Put it away and we grab a 1-0 lead just shy of the 20-minute mark. And in fact, there's another highlight here starting immediately from the restart. Hopefully they don't get an instant reply here to Kaiser Slatin, especially as they are in such poor form. Good work there from our captain and Tom Gale to win that ball back nice and early. Now Dorenzo picks out a Tilgan. We'll just take our time here trying to play their way down this left-hand side. Gale to Warrington, who's a bit loose on the ball, but thankfully, Kaiser out and get it and just pump it deep into the path of Collie. And now we get a chance here again to build out from the back. Bullock to Krasnicki. Campanelli starts to strive for our right back on attack. Squeeze it nicely for Daniel Cueto. He picks up his second goal of the season. It's a bang-bang double, and we make it 2-0. Right on the 20 minute mark and hopefully against the team struggling like Kaiser Slauten are, that will be enough for us to pick up maximum points already from this game. Hopefully even we can improve our goal differential in this one. But good work there from Campanelli having a brilliant start to life here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Good assist there for Daniel Cueto who makes it 2-0. And very short off the back of that second goal now we are down the other end here for a throw in to Kaiser Slauten. Thankfully Tom Gale. Wins that one in there, and a Tilgan here actually get a good chance to do something on the counter attack. We pump that one deep. Salue doesn't win the race to that ball, which is probably a good thing. He was probably an absolute mile offside, but now Kaiser Slatin get a chance to do something down there. Right hand side, Hurtcher puts that one into the mix and nearly hurts us, but it's a good save there from Krapakas. And for some reason, he heads that one out for a goal kick, but big chance there for Kaiser Slatin. Thankfully, Krapakas keeps it at 2 0. And quite a bit of action here in the first half hour of this game. Now we go back down our end here. It's a throw in our favour. A Tilgan back to Dorenzo Warrington. Plays this one in for Cueto. It's a first time finish and curves that one beautifully into the bottom right corner. Cueto now on a hat trick. And we have scored three goals here inside around about 10 minutes to give ourselves a free goal lead. And surely now that means three points here against bottom of the table. Warrington, nice ball into space there for Cueto. And a wonderful first time finish into that right hand corner. And it's 3-0 Lokomotiv Leipzig. And only a few minutes shy of half time. We are on the attack yet again here on a counter attack. We won the ball as Kaiser Slatin did look to be doing something. And now Salue inside the final third back out there. For Campanelli having a very good game, Cueto with a header to get his hat trick, but unfortunately that one goes just across the face of goal. But that was a very good first half, albeit not the most dominant display we've put out in a game of football, but still we've been very efficient with those shots on target. Only four, thankfully, three have found their way into the back of the net. Kaiser Slaut and XG wise have actually had some pretty good chances, especially that header off the back of us taking a 2 0 lead, but Krabakas made a very good save. And off the back of that, it was a second goal to Daniel Cueto. And we go into the sheds with a 3-0 lead. Obviously very happy with how this one's going at the moment. Don't think we need to make any changes like in that previous game. Those players we brought in to start this one doing a very good job. And we'll get things back underway with that 3-0 lead. And coming up to 10 minutes into the second half, Omar Colley has picked up an early yellow card. We'll play things safe here, especially with a nice big lead. Lucas Search will come on for him. 3-0 with 35 minutes left. And only a few minutes off the back of that first substitution, just checking here on some player fitness with a half hour left. And Osman Atilgan is only on a 6.5, so I think we might take him off here and give some time to Triple B off of the bench. That's our second sub used, and still 3-0 up. And it's taken 20 minutes, but we eventually get our first highlight here of the second half. It's a free kick here in favour of Kaiser South, and they get ahead on the end of that one. Thankfully, it goes over the crossbar onto the roof of the net. Now, a yellow card here for Tom Gale. We might make a substitution before this next highlight does start. It is our last stop. So Lucas Locke can come on for him. And also, while we are here, we'll take off Krasnicki. Only going okay today for Osha Davida. And with our last substitution, I think we might take off Racine Bullock. He's a player who's a little bit more injury prone than most in this team. So Chaiwa can come off the bench again this time in his more natural position. That's all our subs used. And we are still 3-0 up with just over 20 minutes left. In this one, and now we have a free kick. Warrington, nice ball over the top there for Krasnicki before he goes off 
good chance, but good save there from the Kaiserslautern goalkeeper to keep it at 3-0. And just inside the last 15 minutes of this one, yet again here it's a corner in our favour. Warrington this time gets his head on the end of that one. That one comes off the post. We are threatening for a fourth goal, but for now it does remain 3-0, albeit shortly off the back of that. Another highlight does start. And we start to do something here down this left-hand side. Dorenzo makes his way forward. He just holds things up here and picks out Triple B. Tries to play a ball in there for Chaiwa. Doesn't quite find him. Salue gets involved. It falls to Daniel Cueto. He will pick up his hat trick. He's had a bit of fortune today in that one especially, but he picks up a well-deserved hat-trick and that makes it 4-0 and puts a cherry on top of this performance at home. Good ball there from Triple B, just didn't quite have enough on it, but from there, Salui yet again doing what a good pressing forward should and putting lots of pressure on that Kaiserslautern defence and the ball falls to Queto, who picks up a hat-trick and makes it 4-0 with only 10 minutes left. And just inside the last five minutes of this game, trying to look here for a fifth goal. It's a free kick there in our favour, albeit Warrington gets his head on the end of that one. But it was never really going to threaten goal from that far out. Kurskin makes a save. They pump that one deep. Do Kaiser Southern, but this has been probably our best performance of the season so far. 4-0, keeping a clean sheet, which is a slight concern that we do have at the moment with this Gagan press. A little bit less defensively solid than we have been with our previous fluid counter-attacking style. But at the moment, it is working for us and certainly scoring a lot of goals. So it isn't having quite as much impact as it potentially could be. That chance to Kaiserslautern through a header does go wide and high. And that is full time. It's a very comprehensive 4-0 win here overall. XG-wise, actually a game that wasn't too one-sided, but we did have just a few more shots. Only one more on target obviously made them count putting the ball in the back of the net four times. Krapikas did come up with a few good saves in particular in that first half, but that is a very good result and does mean we do remain unbeaten going in to transfer deadline day, and it should mean as well we stay inside that top three, which is a nice place to be after the first month or so of the season. We pick up a very comprehensive 4-0 win at home over Kaiserslautern. So a very good result there in the last match day before transfer deadline day and that does mean that we are in third spot. After five games played this season, a long way to go but early stages. We have quite a nice goal differential even though our defence isn't super tight these days but scoring a lot of goals and we are in third place. A very nice place to be this early in the season usually. We've been playing catch up the last couple of seasons. Hopefully getting off to a good start like this does mean that we can keep ourselves in that promotion fight and maybe even go up come the end of this current season, but as you can tell, everything's nice and black and yellow, which does mean we are not at Borussia Dortmund, but it is transfer deadline day. Only four hours left, not much has happened in terms of the first team so far on transfer deadline day, but it's about to be, because we have it a big come in for Lucas Locke from Holstein Kiel, and to be here, it's quite a good one. £250,000, 20% of profit from next sale, and we have found someone to replace him on a free transfer and a lower wage. So because of that, we are going to sell Lucas Lock here on transfer deadline day, our backup ball playing defender. So it's not like it's going to impact our usual starting rotation here at Locomotive Leipzig. But the 24-year-old only has a little bit of potential. And as I said, we've found someone with better attributes for that role. Only spent one year playing here at the club. Did a decent job coming off the bench and did score a goal in that win in the cup that we did play off camera since yesterday's episode. But before then, he was at Mines these days. He will now become a Holstein Kiel player. We get a good little profit there on a player. We did sign on a free transfer at the start of last season. He leaves us for £250,000. And coming in for him is an Englishman in Zayn mon -Louis. He's on a slightly lower wage. Also a squad player. Free transfer, so lots of profit coming from this one. Current ability-wise, not as good as Locke, but same potential. And his attributes are a lot better. For that ball playing defender role, positioning and passing in particular. So hopefully he will be a bit of an upgrade on Lucas Locke. So a bit of transfer deadline day business there. We get rid of Lucas Locke and bring in the former Arsenal man in Zane Monlui. And that was pretty much the only business that did pertain to the first team that we did there on transfer deadline day. So Monlui coming in and getting rid of Lucas Locke for a profit there of around about £250,000, albeit we're not going to see all of that, but that was the only bit of business there we did do on transfer deadline day, as I said, in relation to the first team. We did actually sign a few more players, though, and have some who could be leaving the club going over to the transfer hub. You can see 
So the two players who have dropped down with those new signings of both Omar Kohli as well is Campanelli, where you've got transfer bids in for both of them and did accept them. Stankovic could be on his way out the door for £42,500 these days. His potential actually not as high as I would have hoped. So we're going to let him go there for £42,500 once he accepts an offer. And also, Panzo Ernesto, £48,000 for him. But of course, he dropped down to the B team off the back of that signing of Campanelli, only two and a half star current ability and potential for him. Probably a good time to let go of him before his value drops even further while he is sitting down in the B teams that will get a bit of wage off the books, getting rid of those two players. But we did try and get some promising youngsters in to counter that, albeit one of them we had to pull out of because for some reason didn't quite have enough money in the transfer budget, seeing as those two players have been taking their time to accept those transfer bids. And the player that we did sign was a promising young goalkeeper in Sebastian Krabek, to be fair. Thought he had five star potential. Our scouts got that one wrong. Only four stars, but still will be the best young goalkeeper at the club. As the likes of some of our previous free young transfers, like Ezra Hune, are starting to get on the decline as we get closer, hopefully, to going up to the Bundesliga. So we signed this guy to hopefully be a good goalkeeping option in a couple of years' time. But Sebastian Krabek has decent potential, decent current ability as well. At two stars, he cost us £165,000. So it's the first bit of business that we have done here for money. But thankfully off the back of that sale of Lucas Locke, we did have that available to spend. He's done a decent job so far for Victoria Zizkov B in the Czech Republic. Hopefully with a few years in our B team and maybe even out on loan to develop, he can come back to the first team and make his way in once someone like Matas Hasman does get sick of being a backup to Titus Krabakas, but that was our transfer deadline day business, did a little bit there, but the main thing for the first team, got rid of Lucas Locke, and we did bring in, of course, on a free transfer, Zane mon Louis. so it does mean our squad, pretty similar to what it was going in to today's episode, just that change in terms of mon Louis making his way onto the bench as a centre-back option, and behind Tom Gale, and also Lucas Search will probably get on the bench before he does as well, but I think that will do it for today's episode, a little bit of transfer deadline day business as well as a win and a draw from those two games, a draw against Werder Bremen and a big win at home against Kaiserslautern. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. We'll just check our schedule off the back of transfer deadline day there's only three games in the month of september but two of them are very big and we'll come back for those in tomorrow's episode we'll take on glyph of off camera and then we take on the two teams currently above us on the table bockham who came up from the free league they're currently on top of the table that will be a big game but hopefully a winnable one as it is at home and then we take on linus zimmer and armenia bellafeld away from home those guys in seconds are two big games coming up early stages this season in tomorrow's episode us in third hopefully still taking on the two teams above us on the two Bundesliga table and if we can pick up some decent points from those games we could even move into an automatic promotion spot hopefully that's what will happen so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers oh, thought I could do this left the sadness I don't know